STM32 and 6 is uh, redefining the microcontroller performance to drive uh, innovation in industrial and as well in uh, consumer applications. It's our first microcontroller featuring the ST proprietary neural art accelerator. I already mentioned it and I want to remark uh, it's a neural accelerator by ST that is called neural art. So as of today, if we look at uh, microcontroller portfolio, N6 is the most powerful MCU we have today in our portfolio. So let's discover how N6 is uh, changing the game. First, uh, let's say that N6 is a high performance MCU that is taking performance to the next level, offering a 3360 core mark, which is the highest score for an STM32 so far. So first, uh, you have to know that it's a high performance MCU. It offers high core marks, so a lot of MIPS. But it's not just that. It also has an AI accelerator. And uh, the N6 is positioned at the interception between MCU and MPU. So here we are showing the advantages of N6 versus a traditional MPU. And the advantages are the following. Smallest physical footprint, lower power consumption, because we are talking about an MCU. And uh, so consumption will be for sure lower than a microprocessor. Lower cost. and uh, for sure, also a simpler PCB compared with MPU. And the lower bone cost is, of course, due to the reduced number of the component. And uh, we're going to focus later on about uh, hardware in a dedicated session. So with N6, we can for sure enable new customers to benefit from a huge cost and feature improvement versus what you already know from classical MPU. So the N6 offer, offers for sure MPU-like user experience and maintains the advantage of what we already mentioned. And uh, AI can run on this device thanks to its proprietary neural processing unit that would for sure help to reduce CPU load, increasing the frame per second and the speed of operation when running a convolutional neural network. So uh, don't take my words for it and uh, let the data speak to, for themselves. So uh, I want to show you here what you can do with STM42 and 6 in a few simple demos, OK? And these few simple demos can be found as out-of-the-box demo when you purchase the N6 Discovery Kit. So in this video here, uh, you see um, people detection uh, uh, YOLO V8 model with uh, uh, running with a 320 by 320 activation matrix. Uh, which is running at uh, 26 uh, frames per second, completely relying on uh, the neural uh, processing unit. So that's one typical example. Another one that we will found in the out-of-the-box demo is uh, was estimation, still uh, using uh, YOLO V8. You see how fluid it is. And this is also still uh, running at uh, 26 frames per second, still using uh, YOLO V8. Um, Another interesting one, for example, for uh, touchless HMI uh, is displayed here. Palm detection and hand landmark neural networks. This is also a good example of two models running in a sequence. So one for palm detection and the other one for uh, hand mark uh, detection. So yes, you can use more than one model in sequence. So maybe this is anticipating one of the questions that we're going to have. So for sure, N6 is a game changer, running AI and enabling high performance MCU to run even faster than what we could do on H7. So it's running uh, 600 times faster than H7 that, of course, uh, didn't have any hardware accelerator for convolutional neural network. What we have on board is a Cortex M55 with MVE instruction set, meaning that you have some DXP extension and the core is running at 800 megahertz. So as we said, is the highest frequency for an STM32 so far. It uh, includes a large amount of RAM, so 4.2 megabytes for the time being. And uh, this is also the highest amount of RAM we have ever integrated in our MCU. This large amount for sure is a must for AI, but it's even good for graphical applications. So we will talk a little bit later about the possibility of integrating graphics, for example, with the data acquisition from a camera pipeline. When it comes to security, 
you see we are targeting uh, PSA level three and uh, CCP level three, which is state of the art uh, security. So maybe some of you already know uh, PSA level three means we have some devices on board that are side channel attack resistant and uh, we will discover more about security in just a few slides. Very important for you to know the N6 can come in two flavors. One integrating the newer alert, so with the AI capabilities, and another one which is general purpose line. So the general purpose line is interesting for those who don't want to rely on AI or maybe interested in multimedia graphics application. And uh, we call this line a general purpose line. Now, talking about the specific feature, we already said uh, more than a couple of times that N6 uh, integrates an ST proprietary neural processing unit. So a convolutional neural network accelerator that uh, is uh, clocked at one gigahertz and provide 600 giga ops. Uh, it has high efficiency and it's uh, highly coupled with the camera pipeline to optimize memory consumption. And basically, it can access all the memories on the SOC. Uh, we will see later in the hands-on part that, of course, there are some memories which uh, have uh, some privileges where there are no penalties. But in principle, it can access all the memories on the device. The NPU can also leverage on on-the-fly compression to reduce the storage capability of the weights. And it's completely supported by our Edge AI ecosystem and Cube ecosystem, so you can easily deploy an AI network on the N6 by leveraging on our Cube ecosystem. And you will see a practical example of that in the hands-on number two. When talking about graphics, of course, we have a Neochrome accelerator that was already introduced in previous family you may be familiar with, like U5, uh, in King, U5 uh, for Meg and the H7R. Uh, it supports basically all the classic 2D features, rotation, scaling, interpolation. We integrate also Chrome GRC, which is a memory management unit that you can use to optimize the memory usage. And we also have a JPEG codec that enables MJPEG compression and decompression. So here you have uh, uh, an example of how you can leverage on the big 4.2 megabytes internal RAM of the chip to store a double frame buffer in a case of a 20 bit uh, large display. So yes, you can run a very large display uh, with N6. Uh, uh, with, for example, a parallel interface driving up to 30, uh, 24 bit and uh, having the double frame buffer in the contiguous uh, 4.2 megabytes internal RAM. So for elevating your multimedia experience for the first time, we are also integrating an H.264 encoder that supports 15 frames per second and uh, at 1080p and 30 frames at 720p. So we will have a demonstration about it at the end. You can already image the use case can be web camera or surveillance camera that can leverage on the level of compression that the H.264 can give versus MJPEG. Uh, we talked a little bit also about uh, using this device for machine vision. So uh, indeed, uh, we have an EPCSI2 uh, interface. It's the first time we're integrating this in a microcontroller and it's tuned for managing a 5 megapixel camera at 30 FPS. This can be coupled with a parallel camera interface, so you can use MIPI camera and also a parallel camera. All the camera pipeline and image processor can be tuned by using a graphical interface that is called the ISP IQ tool, uh, and it can be used for tuning the CMOS camera. It's basically a free desktop app uh, that you can use to tune the image quality, the color accuracy, and uh, it's the same that maybe some of you are already using with our STM32 and MP2. And we also have a demo about uh, the usage of ISP IQ tool that we're going to show as the last part of today's session. In the IQ tool you see here is, of course, uh, supported by all operating systems. And uh, you, we hope uh, you will uh, be surprised of how it will enormously help you to save the tuning cost and gaining efficiency during your NAS design. Talking about security, we are targeting PSA and CELZIP level three. We're going to have a dedicated videos about uh, security on N6 soon, but just to mention a few security features we have on the fly encryption and decryption. As mentioned before, PSA level three means that basically we have IPs on the device that are side, ch side channel attack resistant. For example, we also have a debug authentication capability, so the possibility of reopening and closing the debug interface based on a key. 
And uh, again, we are going to have a web video about it soon on our YouTube page. So N6 from the inside is a Cortex M55, 800 megahertz, and the accelerator I say is running at one gigahertz. Very important to note, it's flashless, so you only have a boot ROM. So the zero stage bootloader is stored in what you see here is mentioned as boot ROM. And notably, you can see that everything we have quickly mentioned, for example, all the camera pipeline here, H.264 JPEG decoder, encoder, and the NeoChrome and Chrome GRC are there. Uh, when it comes to packages, we go up to 264, 0 0.8 millimeter pitch, and the device can come as said with or without AI acceleration, and as usual for every STM32, with or without hardware crypto, depending on your use case. If you want to get started, the best way is to use a discovery board. And uh, normally that's the best way to get started because uh, it has everything that you need. So external memories and camera module and display. Of course, there is also the, still the option of using the Nucleo if you want to evaluate more uh, the general purpose capability of this device. Important, the decay, uh, so the discovery kit is coming with a Sony camera module, but of course, uh, the ISP driver is also supporting our own camera board and uh, camera module, so global shutter camera from SD that you can uh, have a look uh, and uh, pair uh, with the discovery kit. So all of that uh, I showed you regarding S6 is, of course, leveraging on our great STM32 Cube framework, and we have done many advancements in the recent years. I want to underline just a couple of them. Now you can generate via CubeMX a CMake file, and uh, we also fully support VS Code, and we are more and more active in the Zephyr community. So uh, already N6 is supported on the Zephyr GitHub that is upstreamed. Regarding AI support, we are going to have a dedicated session, but we are still leveraging on STM42 uh, Cube AI. Uh, and uh, OK, in specifically, we are, we are talking about STH AI, you will see later. So basically, you can input a Keras or a TensorFlow or a or in an extra representation of, uh, of a PyTorch, for example. And the QBI as an output will provide you the optimized model and the AI runtime library to run on your device. So this is the flow that we're going to see in practice uh, later on. So this is basically all from my side. I leave you here with a link that is showing you additional examples that you can try to deploy on N6. Those are part of our free software package for N6 that is called the uh, N6 AI. And um, uh, you will also see some applications that are a little bit different from AI, like, for example, how to enable power measurement, that can be interesting, and uh, how to reach, uh, how to um, achieve H.264 encoding using USB video streaming class. So with this, I want to thank you, and over to, I hand over to Bartosz for uh, the part one of the technical session related to hardware peculiarities. Thank you.